Teacher not ready for what she finds in student's backpack. But before we start, please take a moment to give this video a like, subscribe to Happy World and hit the bell so you'll never miss these great stories. When Miss Neighbors checked her student's backpack one morning, nothing could have prepared her for what she found inside, nor the reaction of her students. It was only after morning work that Mrs. Neighbors finally remembered her duty and went along her way to search students' backpacks and book bags. She found the usual things – books, pencils, the occasional snack that was supposed to be in their lunchbox. All was normal until one girl looked nervous. Bag checks are becoming increasingly necessary as we march on through the year. From benign distractions like cell phones and fidget toys, with obvious exceptions, to malicious products that do harm on the inside and outside of the student body, teachers and security must be on high alert. But surely the younger kids get a pass. Unfortunately, elementary school students are now subjected to the same laws as the older students. They can never be too young to be assumed a criminal. This attitude has sparked outrage in many a teacher-parent sphere, and parents wonder, will this accusation cause my kids to lose their innocence? While the question of innocence may not be a question lawmakers and security guards can answer, one thing's for certain, sometimes it's necessary. Though most kids bringing banned items may not be doing it out of a want to harm their classmates, they certainly can through allergies, sharp objects, or simply clumsy fingers. Just like every other school, student safety is a top priority at Jefferson Elementary School in Jefferson County, Georgia. As a result, students of all grades get their bags checked by their teachers after the morning announcements. Most teachers don't expect to find more than a gaming system, but today was different for Mrs. Neighbors. Mrs. Bobby Neighbor teaches second grade at the Jefferson Elementary School. Though young, she trusts that kids know what to and what not to bring to school that day and generally doesn't sweat over checking student bags for a little extra safety. Generally, the kids don't either, until that day when she noticed something unusual. That morning, the kids had been excited. The morning announcements had mentioned an upcoming book fair, and no matter how old a kid is, book fairs are one of the most exciting events of the year. Ask anyone in a public school, they'll tell you. This, to her regret, distracted her from checking the bags at first. It had taken a bit to get the wound-up second graders to focus on their morning work, so the routine took even longer than usual. In fact, Mrs. Neighbors had almost forgotten about the bag checks entirely. What contraband could they possibly be smuggling in? A Nintendo? Nevertheless, she started checking them. From the way one student acted, it was much more than a game. As Mrs. Neighbors bent to check her bag, she found with a start that the bag was moving. For those uninitiated with backpacks, move they certainly do not. She reached down to open it, concerned about what she'd find inside. A pair of eyes greeted her, the tiny face of a brown puppy. Mrs. Neighbors pulled the dog out of the little girl's backpack and looked over at her. She could punish her for bringing a dog to school. The little girl could endanger the children with pet allergies. But Mrs. Neighbors had another option. Mrs. Neighbors gently passed the small dog around to the wonderment of her students. Each one got a chance to hold and pet him, and he quickly became a classroom favorite. After all, the girl was too young to be punished harshly when she only couldn't part from her animal friend. One question remained, though. Where'd the dog come from? Mrs. Neighbors asked the girl, whose name remains anonymous. She had the most classic, honest answer that could come from a child. My mom must have put him in there. Because, of course, she did. The child had nothing to do with it. The fun couldn't last forever, though. Though he was a class hit and quite calm for a puppy, he couldn't stay in the classroom forever. The puppy named Jake had to go home. Mrs. Neighbors called the girl's mother to come pick him up from school, back to his food and water and puppy pan. Before he left, though, she made a decision. She knew the announced book fair still needed a mascot for it to be official, and it seemed he was already popular with her impromptu focus group. Jake became the mascot, and his slogan, Pause for a Good Book, gave the event a personal touch. But what other effects did Jake have on the school? Jake isn't the only dog who's been at school now. There's a local service dog named Dottie who attends to one of the students, a good working dog. Jake probably wouldn't like the shared attention, though. To end this on terrible puns, Jake would say, 
Paws off, Dottie. I'm top dog around here.